Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. I'm Brian McDaniel, and I will be your guide on this journey through a list of the highest yield material for the USMLE Step 1 Medical Board exam. I've already made four videos in the vitamin section that go through each topic in detail. This video is just an introduction to those videos, which tells you which topics are the most and least important for the exam. We are going to list off the topics from highest yield to lowest yield based on my high yield rating. If you're not familiar with that scale and you want to know how to interpret it or how it's determined, you can click on this orange box here if you're on a computer or just go to my website and click on the about the high yield rating page. The highest yield topic in the vitamin section is going to be vitamin B12 deficiency. You need to be able to recognize the clinical picture of megaloblastic anemia uh, based on symptoms and labs. You want to know what the subacute combined degeneration is. You need to be able to pick out the risk factors for B12 deficiency, things like disorders with the terminal ileum, being vegan, and pernicious anemia. You want to be able to differentiate B12 deficiency from folate deficiency based on lab results or the clinical picture. And you may also see a picture of a blood smear with a hypersegmented neutrophil, so keep that in mind as well. I also give vitamin D a high yield rating of 10. Vitamin D also gets a high yield rating of 10. Now for this topic, you may get less questions directly on vitamin D, but vitamin D is interrelated with a bunch of other high yield topics like parathyroid hormone uh, type questions in endocrinology or things on osteoporosis. So I gave it a higher high yield rating because of its uh, correlation with other high yield topics as well. So you need to understand some of the basics of vitamin D to get some of those questions right. You may also get questions directly on the activation process as well as how that can change in particular with different types of kidney disease. You may see questions on osteomalacia or rickets, but those are much less likely. Like I've already mentioned, most of the questions related to vitamin D are gonna be covered uh, in more detail in our endocrinology section, as well as some with some of the bone pathology. So the vitamin videos don't go into too much depth with the vitamin D because videos I will make later will cover vitamin D as it relates to those other organ system topics. Additionally, in recent years, there's been a lot of research that says vitamin D may be related with things like psychiatric disorders, neuro disorders, and even cancer. But I wouldn't focus too much attention on studying that stuff uh, because those are relatively new ideas that haven't yet had time to make them all the way into medical school curriculums and the test question banks. But it's also that some of those topics, there's not a consensus yet on that. And the exam tends to stay away from things that are controversial. Next up, also with a high yield rating of 10, is uh, vitamin K deficiency. Again, here you're not going to get a ton of questions directly on vitamin K, but vitamin K is interconnected with a bunch of other high yield topics. So you want to know how vitamin K deficiency presents and in particular how important prophylaxis is in newborns, uh, but you're not going to get a ton of questions on that. Really why I gave a vitamin K such a high yield rating is because uh, it's important to understand how vitamin K works with things like the coagulation cascade, uh, lab tests like PT and PTT, and uh, how anticoagulants can uh, uh, interact with vitamin K. So again, the vitamin videos aren't going to have a ton of information on vitamin K. I'm going to hold off and cover that more in the organ systems in the hematology section. So now we're moving on to the medium yield topics, uh, thymine deficiency. Most importantly here, you're going to want to know the clinical presentation for Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, most often linked to alcoholism. Uh, Barry Berry shows up a lot less frequently, so I would really focus on Wernicke Korsakoff. Next, we got vitamin C deficiency with a high yield rating of three. You want to know 
how that deficiency presents clinically, and in particular, how it affects collagen, so the biochemistry of that. Also with a high yield rating of three is vitamin B6. Want to know how a deficiency can present clinically and also how it can be depleted by isoniazide uh, treatment for tuberculosis. Also with a high yield rating of three is going to be vitamin A. So you want to know how supplementation of vitamin A can be used to treat things like acne or measles and also how those treatments do have uh, teratogenic effects. Uh, you may see a question on deficiency, most often related to things like night blindness, and occasionally a vitamin A toxicity question uh, will pop up as well, so that's worth knowing. Next we got folate deficiency. Uh, you want to know a little bit about its correlation with neural tube defects and how prenatal vitamins can have that. Things I said you should focus on for B12, it's more or less the same thing uh, with folate. It's hard to study one without the other. So you want to know uh, megaloblastic anemia, uh, lab results, how to differentiate between the two, etc. And finally, we've got niacin with a high yield rating of three. You want to know the clinical presentation for pellagra, as well as how niacin is sometimes used to treat high cholesterol. And here are the topics I'm rating as no yield or giving them a high yield rating of zero. As you're going through your courses over the first couple of years of med school, it's certainly worth studying some of these, but if you're in that crunch period with just a couple weeks before the step one exam, I would not focus much attention here unless you've already mastered all of the higher yield material. That brings us to the end of the video. If you found it useful and want to help me out as well as make it easier to find my other videos in the future, you can click on this orange box here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to be taken directly to the next video in this section, which is going to cover the basic differences between fat soluble and water soluble vitamins, you can click on this black box here if you are watching on a computer. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with the rest of your studying.